Hi, welcome to another episode of The Language Lady. I'm your host, Dr. Hemphill, and today I'm gonna to be outlining 10 different strategies that you can use in your classroom starting tomorrow to help your English language learners participate in the same assessment as your other students without watering it down and having the same rigor. Stay tuned for more. cover this week's topic, I want to remind you that every Wednesday I upload a new video 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time around different topics regarding English language learners. If there's a topic or a question that you have, please make sure to include it in the comment section below so that I can address it. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you're notified every time I upload a new video. The first accommodation that I recommend for English language learners on an exam is making sure to provide them with a word bank. A word bank is so helpful because it allows students to have words to choose from, especially if they're completing a sentence or a frame paragraph or a frame paragraph essay. If you have not seen my video regarding word banks, I will make sure to link it above so that you can watch that video and have an idea of how word banks look and how they can help your English language learners. A second accommodation is to allow the test to be read aloud. Remember, English language learners are still connecting what the words look like and how they sound. That visual and the audio is so different and they're still learning how to process information. And many times they are familiar with the word but just hearing it reinforces what they think that that word means and says. A third accommodation that English language learners find very helpful is to give the test in chunks. Not to give it all at the same time especially if it's a long assessment. That way it uh, lessens that frustration level and just that feeling of overwhelm when taking the assessment. A fourth accommodation that you should use when accommodating your students is to make sure that the language that is used on the test matches their language proficiency level. For example, if the student is at a beginner language level, then you want to make sure that the language has pictures so that they're able to access and understand the information like so. Also, if they're at advanced language proficiency level, then the language utilized will be closer to the type of language that they're able to produce. Keeping in mind their language proficiency level and where they are should match the type of language used on the assessment. A fifth accommodation is being flexible in the type of responses that you receive from your students. For example, if you're expecting a complete sentence and your English language learner gives you the answer in a format of a list, but the content and the answer is correct, accept that. Remember, we're always thinking about where the student is in their journey in their language proficiency. And also remembering what they're able to do at their level. So if they're able to draw, but the answer is correct, accept that. If they're, if they're writing, their spelling is off, it's inventive spelling, unless it's a spelling test per se, allow that as well. A sixth accommodation is allowing students to let you know what they know by being involved in a project or some type of project where they do not have to create sentences or compose a paragraph or long pieces of writing. If the student is at a, especially if they're at the beginning language level, they do not have enough of the verbiage to be able to complete an essay. So there's different types of projects. Maybe they can create a model of something so that they can show you their understanding of the task that is being asked for. The seventh accommodation that is helpful for ELLs is to make sure that you allow for extended time when applicable. So. Remember, when English language learners are taking a task or when they're doing any task in, during instruction, they're doing two things. They're trying to process the content, but they're also trying to process the language of that content. So giving them that extra time allows them to engage both of those so that they can understand what they're supposed to do in the assessment. Accommodation number eight that's very helpful is allowing students to take the test in a small group. And a small group allows them to ask any questions for clarification. It's a lot less intimidating and less distracting for a student. Accommodation number nine is the use of word-to-word -word dictionaries. Word-to-word -word dictionaries are a specialized type of dictionary that does not provide a definition, but it just gives the actual, def the actual translation of the word from English to Spanish, Spanish to English, for example, if your child is a Spanish-speaking student. Beware that some assessments 
that are standardized do not allow the use of word-to-word -word dictionaries on specific exams. So make sure that you check your school district or your state's policy regarding the use of word-to-word -word dictionaries. I highly recommend that they use them in the classroom so that they're familiarized on how to utilize them. The tenth and last accommodation that I recommend using for your L's is allowing them to edit and revise the work that they have completed on the assessment before actually handing it in for the final grade. It just gives them an opportunity to look over the work and if you add on a rubric with an example of what is expected under each rubric, then the student knows specifically what to look at. English language learners, just like any other student, they're very self-conscious about whether this is correct especially the English language learner because they're already self-conscious about the language and how they sound and how they write and how they present themselves towards their teachers and their peers. Giving them that opportunity to see examples of what the work should look like in the form of a rubric allows them to then be able to test that back or self-check their work. Those are the 12 accommodations that I recommend using for your English language learners. If you have any questions or want to understand one of the accommodations more in depth, make sure to comment below. Also, if I've missed an accommodation that you use that has been very successful, please make sure to comment that as well. We are a community here, so we're learning from each other, so I encourage you to read the comment section so we can get ideas and learn from one another. Again, I post a video every week, so I'll see you at the same time, same place. Thank you so much for joining. Bye-bye.